And here we come to a new chapter. Love isn't logical. Most people would willingly turn their back on a world full of logic for the chance at love, deny themselves a plethora of experiences for the sake of love, give up the baby, the bathwater, the baker and the candlestick maker for the sake of love. In short, they make sacrifices. Why is that? Because love is an emotion, a powerful one. Emotions enhance our stay in the corporeal realm, our tentative tenure on planet Earth. But emotions and logic seldom mingle, even if something seems to make sense in terms of them. Which actually brings us to a third sector called wisdom, but once again that's beyond the scope of this subject just yet. In society, boundaries exist for a reason. I don't necessarily agree with some of these boundaries, as my life has proven to me that people can be raised differently or with variations and still come out fine, bracket, or even exceptional, end bracket. But these differences are what make and or break our society on certain levels. When I was young, I was very close to a male child about two years older than me. He taught me curiosity of sexual things very early on in life, and so my sexual development started earlier than most people. As such, I viewed sexuality different than most people. Sex, to me, was something that was born of friendly curiosity, exploration, experimentation and fun with someone close to you of the same sex but with no official title. He and I were just close young friends sexually exploring each other and the nature of sex, and so that's stuck with me. Over time I've learned that most people have boundaries in place to prevent that sort of thing. And though I firmly believe there is nothing wrong with exploration and self-discovery regardless of age, other people might tell you that it is sick, wrong, different, or that I was traumatized by those actions, and that in order to develop as a healthy, well-adjusted adult with fully developed boundaries, I should speak to a therapist to learn to get over how I perceive sex nowadays, bearing in mind that the majority and society both determine what is a healthy and well-adjusted adult and what respectable boundaries are. Brackets. Hashtag. Biased much. End bracket. Quote unquote. Sex to me was something that was born of friendly curiosity, exploration, experimentation and fun with someone close to you of the same sex but with no official title. End quote. As a result of this, I learned homosexuality as the norm for me. It was what I knew and was comfortable with, and come to find out most of the world is not that. Does that make my childhood wrong? Twisted? Sick? Objectively, no. But within the confines of our society, it might be perceived as such. It can be seen as wrong. If society was different, if that happened to most people, then they'd accept that. And anyone that it didn't happen to would be considered abnormal. But because it did happen to me and didn't happen to them, then I'm weird. Funny how that works, and how the majority is brought simply by virtue of being the majority. Bracket. Hashtag irony versus sarcasm. End bracket. And that's another thing. Objectively wrong versus socially unacceptable. I understand that much of the way things are in our society today is limited. But changing with regards to sexuality, acceptance, what's normal and what's right. I asked the question earlier today on the topics of morality, etc. Quote unquote, is it wrong to have sex with multiple people to be a polyamorist? The answer? Objectively, no. Because, objectively, there is no such thing as right and wrong or good and evil. But within the constructs of an orthodox Christian societal view, it can be thought of as very wrong. In such a circumstance, boundaries exist for a reason. Having sex with children or harlots is wrong because men or women should only have sex after marriage with their spouse for copulation, whereas children may get hurt, bracket, physically, psychologically, developmentally, end bracket, and or die from sex for copulation, and harlots might pass on STDs. The point is, Within the constraints of society, some things are seen as wrong in order to maintain that society, more so than because they are objectively bad or negative. But our society is different now than it was then. We have condoms, vaccines, counsellors and education. 
society may also have means to deal with sexual issues, whether underage or not, but it's only something that can be expounded upon if they consider it to begin with, which is better than ignoring or demonizing its potential occurrence due to quote-unquote societal inability or lack of understanding. Having said that, consider what are some logical or practical reasons that men shouldn't be allowed to have sex with other men. In orthodox Christian views, from the dark middle ages, besides STDs and anal penetration. Once answered, consider how those justifications still apply today, if at all. The trouble with there being no such thing as objective morality means that murder is okay with that justification. However, I don't believe killing or harming another person is okay whether they are subscribed to orthodox Christian views or not. Suggestion. A willful imposition upon another person that negatively affects them, bracket, in the short term and, end bracket, without their consent is not okay. Bracket. Long term emotional effects are a horse of another colour and all individuals may go through this regardless of whether the issue is sex or sexuality based or not. I maintain that if our society is prepared or equipped to deal with this chapter, rather than trying to avoid and evade it because they don't understand it, then our capacity for growth as a society and culture is expanded, if not our body of literature to learn and improve from. End bracket. But what about crushing on or falling for friends? I've come to the conclusion, or at least see the other side of the topic from a monogamous standpoint, that it's beneficial to have friends for the sake of friendship. If they want to take their friendship somewhere sexual, or should remain open to it from the polyamorous perspective, but otherwise be indifferent and assume they'll never come on to me. I asked Jack why heterosexual males are drawn to other heterosexual males, and his response led me to the conclusion that laymen, bracket, straight guys, and bracket, lock other men to hang with and be themselves around. It's relaxing. Men like to relax with other men or compete, but maybe this competition with other men is relaxing for them. The point in this is that boundaries exist once again for a reason, and transcending those boundaries might be okay for some guys, but other guys can't handle it in their narrow or perhaps uptight view of the world. I have the ability to look for, and often find, something good in anybody or on anybody. Perhaps I should voluntarily use this ability much less if I wish to be monogamous. In order for certain aspects of society to function, bracket, until they educate or expand their narrow views, and bracket, certain boundaries need to be maintained.